through the centuries, to explore space was an impossible fantasy. Then two rival scientists became locked in a race to realize that dream. Their struggle would make history. Sergei Koryolov was released from prison to become chief designer of the Soviet space program. He launched the world's first satellite. It's just been announced that the Russians have put a satellite into space. <laughs> and Yuri Gagarin, the first man into space. Despite all the success, Koryolov's identity was a closely guarded state secret. These pictures coming live from Moscow. In America, his rival, Werner von Braun, was struggling to catch up. The Soviets may be ready to go as soon as November. We can't waste time trucking this capsule from state to state while the Reds are orbiting the Earth. And you prefer we kill an astronaut? Now, with the launch of America's first astronaut, Von Braun is closing the gap. And with the creation of NASA, go, baby, go. the moon is in his sights. The eyes of the world now look into space. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The year is now 1964. Come on, come on. Let's get on with it. Sergei Koryolov's role as chief designer is a well-kept secret in the Soviet Union. While everything done by his rival in America is public knowledge. Project Apollo. Destination moon. What rocket will take these men and futuristic Apollo craft to their destination? Let's hear about its design from the world-famous rocket designer, Dr. Werner von Braun. At over 350 feet long, the 75 will be a giant among rockets. Its weight, equivalent to a light battle cruiser, will be lifted into the air by a first stage of five engines producing over seven and a half million pounds of thrust enough to launch over 1,500 Sputniks into orbit. No! The space age has truly arrived. Space exploration is necessary for a dynamic America and essential for the preservation of peace. Both men have dreamed of going to the moon for over 30 years. But Koryolov can't win backing for his lunar rocket. The money they must have. We can't even get our plans for a lunar mission approved, never mind the funds. That von Braun is such a lucky devil. First the Nazis, then the American government. You may laugh for silly, but he will fly his battle cruiser. I am one is unlikely to even lift off the design board. But the Politburo say they want lunar mission. They know we must have a powerful booster like the N1 or the Saturn if we're to do it. Do they? Do they? Really, Vasily? Or do they expect us to pull it out of the bag like we always do? Without a rocket as powerful as the Saturn, we will lose. The Saturn's engines work on the same basic principle as all rocket engines, of which this is an example. The crucial part of the design is the injector plate, like a giant shower head spraying fuel into the combustion chamber where it ignites. It's a process that has to be absolutely precise or the engine fails. Allow me to give you an example. Imagine that at thousands of times the ferocity with fuel delivered at a rate sufficient to fill a family-sized swimming pool every 10 seconds. That's what we have to achieve on the F-1. The most powerful rocket engine ever built. Fail, and we don't go to the moon.
So we're testing engine number 008 with injected plate F367. Senior engineer Paul Kassenholz has been testing the engine for the past two years. Uh, yes, sir, that's uh, 008 and uh, plate F367. But there are problems getting the ambitious design to work at all. Everyone clear the stand? Looks like we're about ready. Trying to get to the black house. Stand by for engine test. Turbo bump sequence initiated. Prepare for engine ignition in 10, 9, 8, 7. Inside the engine, the injector plate is the most critical part of the design. One. It mixes the liquid fuels together through thousands of tiny holes. As the tens of thousands of gallons of liquid oxygen and kerosene burn, the gases expand to create intense pressure. The smallest upset to this smooth mix will lead to a rocket designer's worst nightmare. Combustion instability. All it takes is the slightest thing. Keep me posted on modifications for the next test. Von Braun needs five of these engines perfectly synchronized just to lift his Saturn off the ground. It's never going to work at that size. Well, it'll have to. Or he sure as hell isn't going to the moon. Yeah. How many times have you tried this? He'll never make this with you because he's jealous and always has been. I know, but I need him, and he knows it. His engines launch Gagarin, Sputnik. He knows launching the N1 will be no different. The Politburo still wouldn't fund Koryolov's lunar rocket, the N1. To help persuade them, he and his wife Nina hope to enlist the help of the Soviet's leading rocket engine designer, Valentin Glushko, a man who has long coveted Koryolov's success. I have made my position completely clear to the Central Committee and to the Politburo. My answer is no, unless you change fuels, which you won't. So that's the end of the discussion. You know I can't agree to that. Anyway, to abandon liquid oxygen now would kill the N1. We don't have time. You have seen Von Braun sat there and he used his oxygen. I didn't see it fly. Are we going to the moon or not? not on liquid oxygen using large engines. A schoolboy can tell you the problems you will get with combustion instability. This is not about fuel, is it, Valentin? This is about you and me. I know how you talk behind my back, how you poison my relations with Khrushchev, and how you do the same with the Politburo and Brezhnev. Get out. You cannot stand it when I succeed. You'll do anything to destroy my chances. Leave, now! With pleasure, Valentin Petrovich. If you don't want the job, I will get by without you. That could have gone better. I thought you said the Politburo will never agree to funds if you don't have Grushko. I'll manage. I have another man in mind. Sergei. What happened? I'm all right, I'm all right. Let's Take just get the hell out of here. Please. Take us straight home. 